This exhibition presents three artists who, at first glance, seem fundamentally different. In other words, this is not a thematic exhibition. Rather, it's a sign of quality for group exhibitions when they succeed in highlighting each participating artist, showing them as the singularities that they are, as monads in the sense of Leibniz. The individual personalities of Alice Atty, Karin Sander, and Yong Suk Yoon become especially clear when they are seen next to each other when their works are thus also placed outside the discourse. Alice Atty, Karen Sander and Yong Suk Yoon and their artistic work repel each other to a large degree. And instead of levelling out the extreme personalities of their work, this exhibition rather emphasises them. However, if we assume this exhibition succeeds in singling out their works and liberating them from their discourse, should we then not refrain from talking about them? Certainly, but I am sure you would agree that there is more that can be said here. Aside from the fundamental incomparability of their three authors, Alice Atty, Karin Sander and Yong Suk Yoon share one aspect in common that is immediately apparent. These are works that are based on the belief that a picture, whether it is two- or three-dimensional, is not only a visual experience, but also an intellectual one. The exhibition also presents three artistic approaches within a generational context that is roughly the same as that of conceptual art. In the case of Alice Atty, the fundamental approach of conceptual art, the cycle of reading, seeing, reading, seeing, reading and so forth, which Deloise analysed so brilliantly in his lectures on the time image, runs like a red thread through her works. These focus primarily on the line and are not drawings in the usual sense, but rather imaginary and fragmented walking paths. This also reminds us of Richard Long, who is five years her senior. Their formal range spans from masterfully delicate telephone drawings to the abstracted imaginary notes of a geographer. These drawn pictures thus speak directly about the world. This seems paradox for works that are so economical. The consistent micro-dialogue between line and writing, language and thought not only relies on the method employed by the first generation of conceptual artists, it also brings together visual art and philosophy in an extraordinary and extremely convincing manner. That the conviction that a picture, whether it is two- or three-dimensional, is not only a visual but an intellectual experience greatly characterises the work of Karen Sander needs no further emphasis. With her new glass sculptures, she has liberated a material that has long been held captive in the realm of arts and crafts. These works are based on an approach borrowed from conceptual art. Because she was born in 1957, she belongs to a generation that grew up with conceptual art but later rejected its dogmatism in the early 1980s. When she was invited to make a glass work, she relied on the tradition of conceptual art not only to analyse glass as a material in all its aspects and current possibilities in terms of consistency and viscosity, she also looked at the steps of preparing, producing and using glass so that she could ultimately reject all of them. In their place, she used a completely new method in which she no longer poured glass into a form, but poured it freely, letting each layer create its own shape and run its independent course. The material of glass still holds a fascination in almost all cultures and it reveals a profound analogy to the seemingly transparent crystalline world of computer screens that surrounds us today and also seems to become increasingly impenetrable. Abstract, informal sculptures are suddenly something entirely different than in the 20th century.
Yong Suk Yoon also has her roots in conceptual art and was influenced first and foremost by her teacher Fritz Schwegler. Because Schwegler also taught Katharina Fritsch, Thomas Schuter, Thomas Demant, and Gregor Schneider, Yoon's pictures should be regarded from this perspective. Throughout her studies at the Kunstakademie Dusseldorf, the Academy of Fine Arts, until 2001, up to her postgraduate studies at the Chelsea College of Art in London in 2004 and 2005, her pictures consisted of absurd, freely arranged writing that is woven into the canvas in many colours. During this process, she was able to establish the empty space that has continued to serve as the basis of her intense, abstract pictures in the last ten years. As with Eves Klein, this empty space is immaterially charged. Rosemary Schwarzwelder has been the director of the gallery Next St. Stephen for more than 40 years now. During this time, she has ensured the continuity of a certain understanding of art as the gallery's programmatic focus. This is based on the notion that a picture, whether it is two- or three-dimensional, is not merely a visual, but also an intellectual experience. From the first show Rosemary Schwarzwelder organised in the gallery to the exhibition today, this continues to be the case. The continuation of the intellectual in art is just as important as institutional continuity.